uh, most important one, but RFCs is the best point. We do a lot of reading of RFCs because some information about hacking IPv6 is already written in, in the RFCs. Problem is, most people mean that IPv6 is more secure than IPv4. It can be configured better and more secure, but you have to do this. What we see is most implementation about IPv6 are the same like IPv4. There is no IPsec, no authentication header like this. The people start now, grow, uh, begin start configuring this now, but it takes a long time. The whole world do this with IPv6. On the other problem is a HTTP server who is running on port 80 is the same service, the same program in IPv4 than in IPv6. That means you have the same problem, the same issues like in IPv4. We have some new problems that are IPv6 relevant, but uh, yeah, we show you some of this. Old problems is sniffing, all this stuff is the same stuff. You can use the old tools, implement the IPv6 stack, and most of them are working the same way. And here we have a short overview. On the old world, we have IPv4, some tunnels here, and the tunnel problem. Now we have IPv6, we can combine tunnels with IPv6, we can dual stack IPv4 and IPv6, we can dual stack with tunnels, and if you see here, we have more problems than before for defending all these network problems. Before we have three problems, now we have seven. That means you have also more than double the space of problems to the targets that you can attack. Okay. Um, yeah. Now the problem is find <coughs> find the target. Um, we can do scanning, but um, I think it's from the um, from the IP addresses here. It's a lot of. Or we can uh, use DNS, DHCP. Yeah, we can um, have a look in log files if we have one, or NetFlow. It's very very useful. Um, the other one is yeah, ping. Uh, MLD multicast, or we can use um, multicast DNS and show it in, in the next slide. So if we do a scan at the target, it's only a slash 64, and we have this lot of IP addresses we have to scan, so it's um, not very good. Um, yeah, the scan will take um, this, this lot of um, years we have to scan, so um, yeah, we have to find another way uh, to do find find the target. Yeah, can use it with with DNS. So um, there is a nice tool. It's um, called DNS Dict. Um, have a look at at this um, later on. Um, yeah. Or we can um, scanning just uh, simple IP addresses. We can use um, the dot one dot um, at or dev because um, yeah, admins are, are lazy and use yeah for for um, uh, use for for HTTP servers the uh, um, dot at or for DNS um, dot uh, thirty uh, thirty three. And yeah, the most problem is that um, companies do do not have a IPv6 plan, so it's a um, lot of do yeah, just think. Okay. So um, this is one of the uh, DNS dict we have uh, uh, found. <laughs> so we can use um, DNS dict for example with with IBM. So and we see um, yeah. The result, it's um, yeah. IBM have IBM have uh, has uh, three testing IPv6 servers, so maybe we can use um, this one for a little test. 
And yeah, this is an example with Switch. So we um, get a lot of more information about it. And what we're going to see is um, here it's um, Apollo. It uses um, auto config with the IP addresses. Or, um, yeah. or you see here, um, you see um, these uh, IP addresses are configured by hand, so manua manually. And yeah. Okay, for example, yeah, if you have log files, uh, yeah, you can um, use this one. Um, the useful uh, IP addresses in it, so you can see, um, yeah, this one, for example. And yeah, you you always have to aware that it can be um, use of private uh, extensions, so the IP address uh, can change. This the next one. Oh, okay. <coughs> this we can do. Uh, yeah. Okay. The problem is, is you are uh, remote. We have seen we can use DNS, but if you are local, you have more ways to find the hosts in the local network. First, you see this, uh, this multicast address with the dot, dot, uh, dot one that represents all hosts in the local network. That means if you send out the ping, ping six to this address on this interface, you see the first one is responding, and other, all other ones are also rep responding. And you see here, you have a DUP. That means you have more than one answer. But all devices that have uh, no firewall on site, they respond with this with his lo link local IP address. That means if you send out one packet, you receive the most all local connected devices by IP the link local address. Here we have seen uh, send one received and new, new uh, nine duplicated. That means that are ten IPv6 devices in the network. We show this afterwards uh, live. Then are some protocols inside. That means the multicast listener discovery. That's the way they can send out one packet, and the all clients have to respond which multicasts address they are listening on. This is very information. There are very good information inside the answers. You see here, we do this with Scappy. It's a very useful tool if you need to create IPv6 packets. It works very well. Here's what you have to send out. We do IPv6 with this destination address, which represents all link local addresses. The next header type. And then we say, oh, send me your information. Only this short string, send me all your information. And I received all this information back. You see, we have done a TCP dump. And if you see here, there are different addresses answering or sending information out. Maybe here, you see, it's a multicast address with five on the end, or six. This represents, that means that on this address are some OSPF routing devices running. We have here FB. That means that this some multicast DNS server is running or listening. <laughs> here also you see dot one maybe this all the other devices. There are some other groups that are answering, but about with this information, you found a lot of information what is currently running or which device is doing what in your local network. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> you have heard we have multicast DNS. That's a new feature from my Apple. Uh, it's called ZeroConf. It's a very interesting protocol because the 
each device sends out the packet and say, hey, that's my name. Or if somebody asking a name, he sends an address back, his address back, and he sends out to the multicast address. That means every device in the local networks received also this packet and put it in his local stack and say, oh, maybe I can use it in the future if I need to connect to this device. On most uh, Apple devices, it's turned on by default. We call maybe iPhone, iPad, i whatever, i iMac. Uh, you can also turn on, on some devices in Linux Ubuntu, if you install a workstation version, it's also on by default, not on the server version. We have uh, received some capture file from a camp a little bit outside of Berlin. It's a Wi-Fi capture file. The friend sent, sent me and I say, okay, I have a look. What's inside this capture file, multicast devices? And you see here, there are a lot of eyes sending back his information. We have, uh, yeah, maybe you found some interesting names, but we have a better example of about this. Now we have seen that a lot of mobile devices that are connecting with uh, wireless are running IPv6 stacks. We have tested with uh, HTC. He sent, does not send out any multicast DNS requests. He only answers uh, on some ping device or yeah, pings and this, but he not actively sends out information. Here is uh, some iPhone. He sends out over wireless a lot of lot of information. He asks about some service. He makes some service discovery and said, "Oh, yeah, that's some useful information about me." Yeah, and that's now we go live. Now we have uh, on the other device. Here we are connected to the hash days wireless network. And the simple capture, we send not out any package, we are just listening. And we, let's have a look what we see. Whoop. I think, yeah, maybe here somebody knows these people. Yeah, I seen him yesterday. I say, oh, I see this. I see an iPhone with the name Affi, and a few seconds later, he turned off his wireless connection because, uh, yeah, he don't trust me for some reasons. And you can see here we found the link local IP address also, and if we have this address, we can, if we are connected in the network, we can scan him. We can connect to him if he has SSH open but we have additional information from him. We know maybe his name, some people have full name inside or the name of this iPhone or girlfriend. It's very interesting, we have a lot of fun. Yeah, was it different from Yeah, that's a standardized protocol, yeah. It's the same like in IPv4, but the b benefit is here, normally this phone are only protected by IPv4 and not by IPv6. All firewalls normally work through IPv4, and here you find the information, what's going on, that he has additional IPv6 enabled. And we show some benefits we show you later, because if you are connected in a normal wireless, you have only IPv4 that goes out, but IPv6 is not running, I say. We have afterwards a short presentation what we have done on a place with a little bit more devices. Sure. 
And here we can also show the ping command. Here we have currently not a lot of devices, uh, IPv6 devices here, but you can see here of all these devices, we can connect or try to connect. The problem is there are no tools that you send out the ping and then automatically scan this device or something like that. But I think we will write these tools in the next time because yeah, we need more information how IPv6 networks really works. And for this reason, we need real life tests and we need capture files to analyze it, how this stuff works, really works in the live environment. We have read all these RFCs. There's a lot written in, but live tests are more useful for us. Here we have currently, I think, six IPv6 devices on the network. There's not a lot here, but yeah. Um, yeah, now we have did it in, uh, in this network. We have um, just uh, did it on uh, the main station in Zürich. So, um, yeah, we get some information about um, the iPhone user. So, um, yeah, here you see it's um, some people uh, really uh, use the real name for the I iPhone. So, the so um, yeah, so name it like like the name. It is, so we have to do it a little, yeah, hide it. And what we are going to do is with the information, yeah, we can uh, just yeah, type it in Google and um, search for the person. So we know, um, yeah, this person um, yeah, lives in, in Bern and um, we got the telephone number. And yeah, and just a little other information, um, what it's, yeah, what find Google. So what we have to do, um, and the other person, it's a little more interesting. <laughs> so um, yeah, we have a picture of, uh, of her. We have um, yeah, her um, <coughs> yeah, uh, her education, um, which company she's currently work for, um, where she comes from. There's a little uh, YouTube video for, from her. And um, yeah, and this is only the information we got uh, from the multicast DNS. The funny yeah. thing here is, you see this person lives in uh, Canada, but the Facebook entry says here, I'm currently in Switzerland. But it's true, because we have seen his in Zurich main station. Yeah, maybe if you have the number, you can call her. <laughs> And yet, we think this also we have here, I can, s we have to test yesterday and here today, we can see people are going and coming to next to our Wi-Fi point. It's for some people, tracking is very useful. But yeah, it's, I think it's a step back to war driving times. But uh, the protocol also says that you use an iPhone and yeah, we try to hack them. And we have additional information. It's easier maybe to hack the iPhone with the, if it's uh, jailbreak or something like that. That it's easier to have background information to come to find the right password. Uh, yeah, we have. Did it yesterday? <laughs> yeah, I think it was this morning. <laughs> We will fix this before sending out. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> no. But you can do this. What? Yeah, yeah, if you like it. Or you can go to the other, you can do it on other place and you find a lot of people. Interesting people, yeah. Depends on the name. Also, with um, multicast problems, attacks, you can, you see that it's a multicast protocol. He sends out packet information with the name dot .local. And every client in the network receives this and stores this in his local cache. What's happen if somebody 
sends out a lot of information, wrong information, to this multicast address, and every client has to store this information. Also in the packet is the lifetime for this information inside. You can say, okay, this is valid for two minutes, or you can say this is valid for two days or three weeks. But there are also mechanisms inside that you can overwrite existing entries, read the RFCs, and you find all this information. There is a large place to, uh, to have fun. We create now tools to test this, to try to uh, make buffer overflows. Yeah, maybe we are successful. The first is, uh, say he, he makes an entry in the DNS table, and the first, the better match, but normally you use this only for... This yeah. Yeah, also, but the problem is normally it's only uh, used for dot .local, but there are some requests that you can also use it for global addresses. And that means if you bring down the right DNS server, you can send out information with wrong DNS information to the clients. But uh, I think nobody will do this. <laughs> there is another protocol, Microsoft-based, uh, I can't remember this name, Link Local Multicast Name Resolution Protocol. It's from Microsoft, we read the RFCs, and inside the RFCs, you find the re important information how to hack or misuse this. An attacker can execute a denial of service. I have not to do a lot of research. All information are in the RFCs inside. If you respond more quickly, all information are inside. Already the work is already done. Just write the tool and use it. Also, Microsoft has a very good ID. He has a protocol. It ha it's called Intersite Automatic Tunnel Addressing Protocol. If you start up Windows 7, if he has no IP valid IPv6 address, he tries to connect to an uh, EsaTap router. To find this EsaTap router, he sends out a request. You can see here the request he calls. I need the name the IP address of EsaTap. Maybe some bad guys sent, oh, my device is the EsaTap device, sent back an IPv4 address, and what the client is doing, he make an IPv6 connection over IPv4 to this router or to my device, and then I pa pa send the IPv6 traffic to the internet, to the IPv6 internet. This Name is default coded inside. Just responds to these requests and you become a lot of traffic. Also, next playground is the DHCP v6. We have seen here also Windows clients that are requesting for by a DHCP v6 for an IPv6 address. In this packet, you see some additional information. Here you see the vendor class. That means inside the DHCP requests, there are information about the host system or the client system. That means here you can see it's Microsoft. About only with this packet, I can see, OK, the sender of this packet must be a Windows system. There are other vendors that also send out information Linux and BSD send, does not send an, out any information, but you can ins create for the client, you can send out the information, but it's not enabled by default like in Windows. Then b with DHCP v6, you have the same problem. You can send packets, you can send up a uh, DHCP v server running, but if the device has IPv6 enabled, there are some benefits for us. 
if you like to do strong, strange things. In the old environment, IPv4, there are mechanisms on the switch that nobody can send out in if it's configured DHCP re uh, server re replies. But it, uh, normally, they don't work for IPv6. And uh, if they are enabled, there are some ways with a uh, packet extension header that you can bypass this. So what we are going to do is uh, a little test with the with um, DHCP um, version 6 um, attack example. So um, yeah, the client sent out, um, yeah, where's my uh, IP address uh, over DHCP v6. So um, yeah, we just answered and said, yeah, you can take this one. and. Um, what we are seeing is in, uh, in, in Linux uh, with a white DHCP uh, v6 client, um, the client overrides uh, the resolve conf. So uh, the client doesn't have uh, uh, IPv4 um, address for, for, for the name server. In, and the conf file is only um, the IPv6 address we, we gave him. And um, yeah, that's really uncool because so, so, so the client only tries anymore so the, to reach um, yeah any type uh, of URL about uh, over the, the IPv6. So um, yeah, that's what what we are seeing. So um, yeah, you can just injecting new DNS server. You can use your your one, and the client goes over your DNS to reach um, some, some home page. And what we see is um, Apple uh, doesn't support it yet. So they don't have uh, any an implementation to use um, DHCP v6. And um, yeah, what we're seeing is, yeah, we can um, just in injecting the uh, network information, but what we are thinking is, yeah, it's good for the client. <laughs> so maybe we can use uh, yeah, the client and, and the network to go over our name server. Um, Apple uh, doesn't have any uh, client for, for DHCP v6. Yeah. <laughs> so they have the, the field um, automatic, but um, if you um, use it, uh, it's, it's not um, yeah, questioning for DHCP. So it only uses for, for tunneling. Yeah. Now you, you, you only have the, the link local uh, IPv6 address, and you can do it manually. But if if you use this with the automatic, um, you you don't uh, get uh, uh, any IP addresses. Yeah, you can. This is the DNS. Yeah, you can give it to, but but you don't get any uh, DHCP. Yeah, because uh, Apple don't talk. Okay, don't yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, so, so can, yeah, Apple can use um, white uh, DHCP uh, v6 also, but they haven't it yet implemented. Yeah, but you cannot send out the DNS uh, information or, or the network useful in network yeah, information yeah. with uh, root advisory. Well, yeah. 
que... Yeah, um, yeah. Um, yeah, and this is a possible scenario. So um, the clients connect um, over yeah, wireless uh, to, to the internet. And um, now it comes a bad boy <laughs> and uh, runs a DHCP v6 server and a DNS and maybe a web server. So, um, in so um, yeah, the bad boy um, gives uh, the client the IP address and tells him, um, yeah, just use this DNS server. And yeah, the client goes now not to, to the internet, um, yeah, because uh, it says in, in his config to use um, yeah, bad boy's um, DNS server for any requests. Okay, we have done this a uh, couple of days ago on a big airport near Zurich. <laughs> I don't say the price, but we've seen in one hour. We have tested on. We have only one hour time. We have answered to more than 200 DHCP requests, unique requests that we seen. We have more than 200 devices that are looking for IPv6 addresses. We have seen in one hour more than 600 devices, different devices with IPv6 enabled. On the peak time, we have seen more than 300 IPv6 devices in the network. That are 300 targets that we have. Now we have seen that we need a script who takes this information, make a very fast port scan, and then maybe try to attack these devices. This was only one hour in a public wireless uh, in Zurich airport. Oh, uh, yeah, you have a big uh, wireless his over all over the places there, and we have a lot of fun and see a lot of information, a lot of devices with names, with company names inside. Yeah, it's next step will be do that we do this automatically and see what happened. And I think we are very pleasure. If somebody asks us something, give me an IP address. We all just answer him. We have this done with Linux. It's very useful. You can set up in a few minutes. It, it runs very easy. Maybe some people here are not happy if you, sh if you show this, but you can try this in your local hash network here. Maybe we see more after this, we see more HTTP requests and answers. Yeah. The precedence is that we can send out IPv6 information and normally devices use first IPv6. Then as they fall back to IPv4. Yeah, we or we overwrite the name server. And then we have because of this nobody maybe the hey, the, the device received an IPv4 address, DNS server, all this information, but we overwrite this. And then we can start, send out our information. Then we have can send Maybe the DNS server is our local device, and then we can inject our information. And uh, yeah, that's that's defined in our. <laughs> yeah, that's they want to push it uh, to bring the more forward. It's also because uh, Windows has enabled Windows Seven has enabled by default uh, IPv6 in this uh, Torado tunnels. If it cannot connect over IPv6 over Torito, it, it first sends some information over this tunnel to Microsoft Torito servers and then to the IPv6 world. That's what we show here. If you enable or if you set up a Windows system, it tries to connect over Torito tunnel to Microsoft. The entire resolution of this name, maybe if you are uh, good enough, you can. S spoof this information and send it to the local network and then you say, okay, this Microsoft Torado server is my new setup Torado server. Maybe we try this a little bit later. Oh yeah. Also, if one client in your network has a connection outside, there is an auto IPv4 mechanism that 
he sends out information on this address and say, hey, I have a connection to over IPv6. And all other clients in the network say, oh, there's something, ha somebody has an IPv6 connection. Let's try and go over this tunnel to the internet. Maybe you can use this local. <laughs> Yeah, here we have a bad girl, you see. Yeah, that's... Uh, <laughs> no, uh, there's a some, some short history about this. First, I have al always bad girls, and she, she blames me, and yeah. Then we have mixed a little bit up. <laughs> yeah, the also, the, 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 the main meaning is we, we work in the same team, and our chief says, I'm the bad boy, and she's the good girl. I don't know why, but... Uh, <laughs> okay, here we have tunnels over another port than the default port. How you can use this? I have to make a short animation. The bad girl sends a mail to some client in the, user, uh, in the corporate company with some exploits inside or whatever he do. The cli or client opens the bomb. And then the software is trying to connect to a Torado server outside the internet. Normally the firewall blocks the default port. Who is 3544? The firewall normally blocks this. But if you have an intelligent uh, client, he tries all the ports to find the way out. Because the bad, bo bad girl has set up a Torado server with different ports listening. Maybe port 53, because on most firewall, it's open widely, UDP port 53. And, the, and the, here you can see that the client now connects over IPv4 to this uh, uh, server, creates an IPv6 tunnel. And if you know that all IPv6 addresses are reachable from hold the world back, the bad girl has a direct connection over this tunnel back in your company. It's, it can be maybe useful. <sighs> Other problem is we have a lot of extension headers in IPv6. The RFC says there must be some order are required. But what happens, what the device does if the order is not in the, se in the correct ways, or you have 10 headers with the same input, some uh, stacks are just crashing if, you, if they received wrong headers, wrong size of headers. And that's, I think, a big problem that you can bring down the local network with wrong IPv6 extension header packages. The problem is there is not no good code code or tool available now and yeah we try to find somebody who's write this that he sends out the first facing tool and write send out a little bit different packages with wrong information inside to crash the stacks also there are some playings with routing header also so games with routing header that you can play send the uh, ICMP package or packages back and forward between two routers but that's all yeah Old stuff and mostly fixed in the network. Uh, not with jo uh, with Juniper, I have uh, some other yeah issues seen two weeks ago. Uh, if you, s um, but I think we talk about this afterwards. Uh, yeah, but we. We have seen uh, in another big router company, he builds a router. We, uh, we know that if they have, th for example, they have more than four extension headers, he sends the packet anyway through the firewall or. That because they have, th <laughs> yeah, the, the problem is if you do this, uh, the router has to inspect every header and have to look inside, is this for me, have I do something with this, yes or no? And, the, and the mostly routers do this in software. 
And because of the CPU usage is limited on the devices, the reason is they say, okay, let's forward it in. It may be, it must be good. Yeah. Yeah, 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 but you have, yeah, yeah, As a, yeah, but uh, also switches, maybe you have, uh, there, was, there are a feature in the switch, in the access switch, that you can protect the port that nobody can send in root advisory packages. But if you put it in one extension header between the information and the IPv6 header, there is not locking on this and it pass. And I think the same problem will be in the HTTP, the HTTP 5.6 because you have to look inside the packet. Now we have uh, on the access switches there's code and it's the header and the root advisory package but it, it's if it's an uh, extension header between here it doesn't rec recognize the packages and send it also through it. Yeah, you see here the extension with more four than four extension headers. Also, we have some package that must pass the firewall, the router. The most important thing is it has to pass the firewall because uh, IPv6 has no f has some limitation in IPv4. The the router between the whole internet connection can fragment the package. But in IPv6, if somebody, if a link in the whole chain of uh, transmission has a smaller MTU size, it does not fragment the packet, it drops the packet and sends the information back, the packet is too big, make it smaller. The minimum packet size is maybe 1280, and yeah, if you filter this on your firewall maybe your internet is not no longer working because if you have a link smaller than 1500 m2 size the client does not receive any f uh, information about this because you have to open this port on every device maybe you can create a tunnel over this protocol uh, some people can remember some old ICMP tools that do this the same way with ICMP, ECHO and REQUEST. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Now <laughs> we come to the routing protocols. So we had a look at uh, OSPF um, version 3. Um, there are many key uh, differences. So, um, yeah, an interface can have um, multiple uh, networks uh, configured on it, and um, this means yeah, multiple instances per link. And um, the source uh, package is always uh, from the link local address. So, and the authentication you remember OSPF version two uses yeah null or simple password and MD5, and OSPF version three. Uh, doesn't support any authentication itself. It uses um, IPsec, which comes with IPv6, and yet yeah, support authentication header or ESP protocols. <laughs> so um, we had a look at this, and um, yeah, tried it with Cisco. So we see uh, when we configure this with uh, authentication header, um, yeah, it's uh, Here's the authentication header, and afterwards we see um, OSPF version 3 is a hello package. Um, if you use this with ESP, um, yeah, it will be encrypt uh, encrypted, so we um, doesn't see any hello packages or the package content. And um, yeah, if we have a look um, how it, it works, so we can. Um, do a little uh, show crypto engine. The connections are active. Um, we see here it's um, IPsec, it's over MD5, so the encryption and decryption, the package are counting. 
And um, if you're changing the authentication header to ESP, um, yeah, the um, crypto engine doesn't, um, yeah, the, the connection over the authentication header uh, doesn't stop. So um, the connection over ESP uh, will build up, see it here. But um, yeah, there's no package go over this, um, yeah, this connection. So what it means is if you change uh, a password on one side and um, yeah, you forgot it on the other side and uh, the router is crashing, so afterwards you don't have any OSPF connection because the password is um, mismatching. And um, the other one is um, if you use IPsec, um, the uh, CPU cost is, is very high. And um, yeah, it's it's what yeah. The question is what what is the um, yeah big uh, the best practice uh, practice to use it. Okay. Um, yeah, we had a look at um, checkpoint and um, checkpoint um, doesn't support um, IPsec anymore. It's the last one in um, IPsec four dot two, and um, the newer version doesn't have it, <laughs> so um, <laughs> yeah, and um, yeah, can try uh, to uh, do a little package with Scappy. Um, you see here it's uh, uh, LSA we sending. It's uh, intra area prefix, uh, yeah, intra transfer router, and in this package, um, yeah, we can do. Uh, just an external LSA, so you have an internal and the external LSA, and um, send it to so, uh, to the uh, checkpoint firewall. And um, yeah, afterwards um, there are doesn't any neighbors anymore, <laughs> so you lost your whole routing, and yeah. And yeah, and the RFC also says, um, yeah, unlike um, IPv6, IPv, uh, in, in IPv4, IPv6 allows LSAs uh, which are unrecognized. So um, yeah, maybe we can uh, just store it and flood it anyway. Or um, yeah, uncontrolled introduction of so, uh, such LSA could cause a stub area link state database to grow, and um, yeah, and the router hasn't the capability um, to <laughs> store it. <laughs> For pi, okay. Uh, yeah, we have also tried to attack uh, network devices. There are old tools that you can re reuse. Just maybe you try to bring up the CPU high on the, uh, on the router or the network devices. Maybe there are the old problems. If you try to send a package that this last hop is on the router, he said the router says, oh, my TTL is one. I have to reduce one. OK, there's zero. Oh, I must send back an information packet. And he sent back, oh, TTL is ex expired. We have done this in a, with another big uh, router, Juniper. They have, the router has a limitation that says, OK, if I send more than 3,000 packages that are terminating me on me, I send not more out than 3,000 packages. For security reason, I do this. But the result was the router crashed if we send more than 3,000 packages on the, in one second because the CPU is growing up and he has no more space or some table is overflowing, there, but the process is there going on with uh, Juniper. Also, we have tried to send uh, packages with the same source addresses that the router has. And yes, it's very the behavior of the, the, the network devices is very interesting. The same problem that we have in IPv4, we found in IPv6. That means reuse your old exploits, test it, and maybe you, mostly you are successful.
Ja, das ist ja auch dazu. Yeah. I see a lot of this information also, yeah. But uh, for what can I, uh, hackers I use IPv6? Because we have seen before, if you connect your device with a randomized IPv6 address, you can very well hide your attacking or scanning device in an IPv6 network. Turn on a good firewall, block everything that is coming to you, and you have the way that nobody will find your device in the IPv6 uh, network. Also, mostly they use IPv6 to tunnel traffic from inside to outside. Some IDS, IPS or whatever I protection systems that are available that don't not recognize IPv6 traffic in IPv4 tunnels. And then they, you can normally bypass mostly the security device. The problem is find the hackers. Snort has always uh, currently inside some new features that you can normalize IPv6 traffic, ICMPv6 traffic. But the problem is there there are not good uh, Snort rules available. This is starting now. You can see in Germany is a big group that is working on this. They have also written the preprocessor, but there you have to create your own rules that match for your network. There are some rules that I found on the internet, but there is only a smart part for, of a text that are currently running in the net IPv6 world, but mostly they are not recognized. And I have seen other vendors that say we can filter out or detect uh, IP wrong IPv6 packets, but the implementation is very lazy or still not working. Available tools, short, we have here short list, a very good tool is to IPv6 to f play a little bit around, is here from the hacker's choice. Also Metasploit has already some implementation about uh, with IPv6. Nmap of course, it was a long time ago. But remember Nmap, in IPv4 you can give him a range. IPv6 there is no way that you can scan a range, you can only scan one IP address. For some reason he has implemented this. What we need is a lot of more tools to find some new security holes. We need a, f a packet faster, a faster sc uh, scan, a uh, faster packet creation tool. Scappy is very useful for creating single packages, but if you have interact with it, or yeah, there must be more tools available. Also for analyzing the traffic, we have I found some. Uh, problems in a TCP dump and T-Shark, if you write your script for analyzing traffic, there are some missing protocols or normalization in IPv6 that you have already in IPv4. But I think it's now it will start this, that the, all these tools will become more and more IPv6 capable. Yeah, future, I think most of people will use more security authentication header and IPsec for IPv6. The problem is also we have new, every time we have new RFCs, that means some, um, some implementation that are running on the current device are out of date with the new RFCs. Yeah, on the of this I think is the most problem that we have in the future. All these IP mobile devices are supporting IPv6 Oh, and I think mobile providers will use in the future IPv6 for transporting IPv4. And we, I think we, there, we will have a lot of fun there. Because the implementation of the stacks and the software is still in the beginning. Yeah, that's all. I think we have a lot of more slides, but yeah. If you want to reach one of us, yeah, email.